Today's video is all about customizing the Fujifilm X-T5. I'm going to explain the differences between the Q menu, C1 through C7 custom settings, my menu, and then show you how to change all of these settings on your camera as well as show you how to customize your buttons. What's up everyone, Pete Coco here. I am a portrait photographer based in New York, and today I have another Fujifilm video for you. But before we get into the topic of menus, make sure that you download my free PDF for some awesome portrait tips. And go ahead and visit my sponsors in the description below for discounts on everything from film simulations to equipment rentals and clothing. So what's the difference between the quick menu, my menu, and custom settings? Well, if you're new to the Fujiverse, it's easy to be confused by the menu system because there are actually two distinct customizable menus available in the camera. And then there's custom settings, which lets you change global settings for up to seven in film and seven in video mode. So let's first explain the differences between all of this. The quick menu is accessed by pressing the Q button on the back of the camera. And this is a shortcut menu where you can access 16 different options on the fly. This menu is customizable and it's quick to make changes here as the name suggests. My menu is another custom menu which is located at the very bottom of the menu page when you press the menu button on the back of the camera. This is empty by default but you can add as many or as few options here as you like to fit your specific workflow and rank them in order of importance. Now the main difference for me between my menu and the quick menu is that you can add a lot more to the my menu. So you're not limited by 16. Practically speaking, the quick menu is where I put my most frequently used options. And the my menu can either be used for other important menu items that you don't use quite as often. And then also just to have your favorite menu options in one place. The seven programmable custom settings let you register and save global settings, which you can recall instantly. So think of the custom settings as seven specific shooting situations that you can program into your camera and even name. For instance, in my camera, C1 is called headshots. When I choose C1, the camera immediately recalls all of my studio headshot settings. These settings include my preferred autofocus mode, shooting in raw, standard film simulation, manual white balance set to 4800 Kelvin, and other things which I always use when I'm shooting in my studio. Then when I choose C2, which I call natural light, the camera recalls a different set of options, including raw plus JPEG and auto white balance. Since I use this setting a lot for street and family photography, I like having the JPEGs as well as the raw, which I don't need for my portrait sessions. I have C3 named Acros JPEG, and I use this setting when I want to take black and white snaps without needing raw files using my favorite black and white film sim acros plus the green filter so you can probably see now how useful the custom settings can be for global control depending on what you're shooting now keep in mind that both the order of your options in the quick menu and my menu will not change when you go from c1 to c2 to c3 and so on but the specific selections you have will change in other words once you set the quick menu, the order of the options stay in the same place regardless of which C setting you're using. Let's now set up our quick menu. If you press the Q button once, you can access the quick menu and use the default settings. But let's say you wanna remove, move, or change any of these 15 options. It's very easy to do. Press the Q button again to leave the Q menu and then press and hold the Q button. This will access a new menu that lets you edit the quick menu with the top left square blacked out. If you click on any of the 15 remaining squares, a list of options will appear which you can scroll through and change and choose as you wish. On my camera, the top three items on my quick menu are AF, AF custom settings, and metering modes. But you can change any of this and choose from five pages of camera settings. The quick menu is great because now you can easily change settings by touch or by using the AF joystick and command dials. I like how it lets me also see many of my options at a glance in an easy to understand visual representation. Okay, so now let's set up our My Menu. 
My menu will let you add a lot more options in the quick menu, and it also lets you rank the items in order of importance. By default, my menu is grayed out because it's empty. So let me show you how to add options to begin with. First, press the menu button, scroll to the wrench icon and choose user settings. You have two options for my menu settings, one for stills that has a camera icon in front of it and one for video that has a video camera icon. So you can create two distinct my menus that represent both your still shooting preferences and your video shooting preferences. To add items, click add items. This will bring you back to the entire camera menu, except now the options are all in blue. Simply scroll to an item you want and click to the right. It will then be added to your my menu. Click the left selector arrow to go back to the list of options. Scroll down to the next menu item you want to add to your my menu and click to the right again. Continue this process until you've put all the options you want in there and then press the display back button to go back to the previous menu page. Here you can now rank your items or remove items you've added by mistake. Click rank items and then click the right arrow button to highlight an option in yellow. Scroll up or down to change its order on your list and then press OK to register it. It's that easy. Once you've added all your favorite options, you can now access them quickly and easily in your custom menu page. It's really that simple. Okay, so now we know the differences between the quick menu and my menu, and we learned about custom settings, but we still have not learned how to set up our custom settings. Now remember that the C1 through C7 options are global controls, and although they won't move any of your menu items from where you've placed them, they will change the actual specific settings based on how you program C1, C2, C3, etc. To register a C setting, press the Q button to access the Q menu. While in that menu, press and hold the Q button to access the Edit Save Custom Setting menu. Now you will see a list of C1 through C7 and you can create or edit each one. To register a new C setting, Click the right arrow and select OK. Then click the right arrow again to edit all of your specific settings. You can select your preferred image quality, film simulation, color effects, sharpness, dynamic range, autofocus modes, subject detection setting, and much more. Once you've set all of these desired settings, click the display back button to go back. You can now scroll down to edit custom name and name the C setting anything you want. If you're a nature photographer, you can name it birds, for instance, and instantly recall settings where you've already programmed bird detection. When you go back into the Q menu, you will now be able to scroll from C1 through C2 through C3, etc., as long as you've set them up. If you scroll past all of your setup C settings, then a standard program mode will appear. Now this is also a little confusing at first because it will either show P, A, S, or M depending on how your manual dials are set. So if you have the shutter speed and aperture dial set to a random setting, an M will appear. If you set your shutter speed to A, however, and you have a random aperture set, an A for aperture priority will appear. Now this is confusing because you don't actually set any of the PASM modes by scrolling through the quick menu, but instead by moving the analog dials on the camera. So it's really only showing you the mode you're in on the quick menu when you're not in a C setting, instead of letting you actually change these. So you can't change aperture or shutter priority or program or manual here. You change these the old fashioned way by moving one or both of your dials to the A position. Also remember that you can set up to seven custom settings for both video work and still work. So your X-T5 really does have a lot of customization available. In addition to everything else we discussed, you can also program most of the buttons on the camera to instantly access settings that you use often. To change any of the default buttons, press and hold the display back button on the back of the camera to access the menu. This menu will show you all of the many buttons that the camera has with a picture of the camera and an arrow showing you where the button is located. Simply press the right arrow to change any of these default settings. On my camera, for instance, the AEL button on the back of the camera is set to right slash left eye switch.
instead of its default setting because I use this button to quickly choose between the left and the right eye when auto-focusing on my subject. Now you can change almost all of the buttons, including the Q button and even the view mode button located next to the viewfinder on top of the camera. How you customize these buttons is once again, only limited by your imagination and your preferred shooting style. And your customized buttons will remain the same regardless of which C setting you're in as well. If the X-T5 is your first Fujifilm camera, all of this can seem very daunting at first, but taking a little bit of time to set up your quick menu, your custom settings, my menu, and your custom buttons is one of the best things you can do because in the long run, it will save you a ton of time. Instead of having to scroll through page after page of menu options to find what you use a lot, you can put most of your items right at your fingertips and this can make the difference between either getting or missing that great shot. So make sure you spend a little time setting up your buttons and menus because you will not regret the time investment that you put here. All right, well, that's all I have for you today. I hope that you found this tutorial to be informative and maybe even a little enjoyable. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because each subscription really does help me to invest more time and energy into the channel. Hit that like button and drop me a comment letting me know your favorite custom button and menu settings on your X-T5. Here's wishing you an amazing day. Go out and take some awesome pictures and I will see you all next time. Peace.